Praise Jesus, praise the King of Kings, and praise the Lord of Lords. I'm from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. I'm here today to preach the word of Jesus Christ. Hope that some of you give a light to God today, amen. Now today's message is, what is faith? What is faith, my dear friends? Now the answer is, you trusting God. That's what faith is. Now if you look into the book of Romans, and you will understand that Romans is the book of uh, the foundation of our faith. It is the constitution of a Christianity. It is the solid rock upon which we stand. The book of Romans tells us more about the grace of God than any other book in the Bible. I love this word grace. It's a beautiful word, isn't it? But the name of Jesus Christ is more beautiful. Amen. Thank God for his grace through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ dying upon that cross in agony in, in blood in pain for our sins he provides us that grace so listen my dear friend faith it is something that been laid hold upon which grace provides that's what faith is without faith without faith my dear friend there's no way that you can acquire the grace of god for the grace of god only come into your life through faith for that reason the bible says Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 For by grace you have been saved through faith So without faith No faith, no grace Amen So what is faith? Simple means Trusting God That's what faith is You trusting God Forsaking yourself Forsaking your good will forsaking, forsaking your good works forsaking, forsaking your good intentions Forsaking your sin and your first bed nation and then turn to jesus christ and receive that grace through faith you see so faith is you forsaking and you trust in god amen you ought to do what to forsake everything and you trust in god my dear friend that's what faith is and so when we trust god by faith that's the salvation we receive through grace for grace for by grace you have been saved through faith. Through what? Through faith. So it is faith that receives what grace provides. So Paul tells more about grace, and then he'll go on to speak to us more about faith. So he tells us about faith, and I ought to do what to understand what faith is. He says, Faith makes God's grace available to us and to be ready to us, my dear friends. So grace of God is God's ability. And faith is what man's responsibility. Amen? So the grace of God is God's ability. And faith is man's responsibility. Jesus Christ died. But we must believe him and receive him. Or else his death on the cross of Calvary will do you no good. So it is our responsibility to respond to God's grace. And that you ought to, ought to receive and to receive it by faith. You want to be saved? You have to receive the word of God. Receive Jesus Christ today by faith. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you want to be sanctified? As of Apostle 15, verse 9 says this, sanctify their heart through faith. Do you want the prayers to be answered? Mark 11 verse 24 says this, Therefore I tell you, whosoever asks, whatever you ask for in prayer, and believe that you have received it, it is yours. Do you want to overcome this word? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, For everyone who has been born of God, overcome this word. And this is a victory, that to overcome this word, even our faith. So it is faith. It is faith, my dear friend. It is faith is what is the minimum exchange. It is a kingdom principle. Without faith, it is impossible for you to please God. You want your prayers to be answered, my dear friend? You need to do what? Have faith in God. That's the reason just why he speaks this in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 29. Just why he said, Let it be undone unto you. According to what? According to your faith. So according to your faith, let it be done unto you. That is the measure. You see, your faith is the measure of your victory your success and your destiny so all these things be provided by the grace 
So that comes faith in your life through grace. That's the reason just why he said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. So it is important that me and you understand this and to learn what faith is today. Because Paul has given us and have taught us about the grace of God. And now he's talking about the faith. That is the grace of God. Now listen to what Paul says here. In the book of Romans chapter 10, 17 to 21. So faith comes by hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. But they ask, haven't they heard? Indeed they have. For the voice have gone out on the whole earth. And the word of the word to the ends of this world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? For Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who, have, who are not a nation. And with a foolish nation, I will make you angry. Then Isaiah so bold to say this. I have been found by those who do not seek me. And I have shown myself to those who do not ask for me. But as of Israel, he says this. All day long, I have held my hands out to a disobedient and contrite people. So today I want to talk to you about this message. What is faith? Like I say, faith is you trusting God and forsaking everything that you know. Forsaking all your shortcomings. Forsaking everything that you think that makes you weak by you trusting God. You see, it is, it is not nicety. It is what necessity. Because your future depends on your faith, my dear friend. Your destiny depends on it. That's for this reason the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. So it is necessary that you understand the necessity of this, of this message for you to receive Jesus Christ today. Amen? Do you know what lack, lack of faith is? It is not weakness. It is wickedness. Lack of faith is not weakness. It is for wickedness. Everyone who does not believe has no any screws to give why they do not believe. Because the Bible says that God has dealt every man according to the measure of faith. So unbelief is a terrible thing and also it's a horrible thing, it's a horrible sin in the eyes of living God. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 5 verse 10, whosoever does not believe, make him to be a liar. So that means unbelief is like a slander against God's character. That's what unbelief is. And we know that due to unbelief, if sin against God in the Garden of Eden, it was unbelief that closed the doors of the promised land to the children of Israel. Because of their unbelief, they spent 40 years in wilderness and most of them died. Do you know that unbelief will send men to hell? If you are not believing, that will send you to hell, my dear friend. You ought to do what? To believe the word of God. Listen to what Jesus Christ here. This is the word of Jesus Christ in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 18. Listen carefully, my dear friend. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe in him is already condemned. That's what Jesus Christ says. Because you have not believed in the Son of the only God, Jesus Christ. And some of us here today will get different mindset concerning this. The Bible says, even as you are living right now, that you've already been condemned. Why? Because you fail to, uh, to believe Jesus Christ died and offer salvation. Then if you refuse to receive that salvation, therefore you are not saved. If you are not saved, then that means you perish. It's only two types of people in this world. The saved and the lost. Which one are you today, my dear friend? You see, Jesus Christ came even in his own town. The Bible said they, they did not believe. And because of that, he could not do a mighty work. He couldn't perform miracles there. He did only the two bit. He couldn't do the mighty ones. Do you know why? Because of their unbelief. So unbelief keep Jesus Christ, the God of glory. He said, but I can't sleep. Is he not sovereign? Is he not powerful? Is he not glorious? Of course, my dear friend. It's all those things. But yet again, due to the unbelief, he didn't perform much miracle. The Bible said, let it be done to you according to your faith. So Jesus Christ limited himself, allowed himself to be limited. Because of what? Their unbelief. That's why the Bible says, he who believes in him is not condemned. But if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, the Bible says you are already condemned. So that means before you go and sing God, when you die, you are already condemned. As you are living right now, for refusing to believe on the word of Jesus Christ. So unbelief is not merely weakness. Unbelief is wickedness. You see, unbelief does not come out from your head. The unbelief is not about your intellectual. Your unbelief is right there in your heart. Because the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. 
He said, take care, brothers. Least there be any of evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. So the, it is unbelief that moves you away from the living God. It is the unbelief that moves you away from Jesus Christ. The reason why you're not believing, there's nothing wrong with your head. There's something wrong with your heart. That's what the Bible says, my dear friend. And then Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, The just shall live by faith. How do Christians live? By faith, not by sight. You see, it's not you trying to strive or to try to sign. It's not you trying, trying something. It is you trusting God. The just shall live by faith. So it is important that you understand this. It is because faith is the thing that lays hold. What you receive through the grace. What grace provides. What is faith again? Faith is you trusting God. What is the true biblical meaning of faith? The first thing I want you to see here is this, the object of the faith. It is very important. It means where you put your faith. It is important that you understand it because many of you today, you put your faith in the wrong place. Some people talk about uh, positive thinking, which is not faith. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm all for positive thinking, but that's not faith. It's not faith at all. Some people think today is hoping for the best, which is not faith. I mean, you are hoping for something. I'm happy for you. But ho hoping for the, ve for the best is not faith at all. Some people also think today, giving all their best, which is not faith. I mean, thanks for giving all your best, but that's not faith. It's not faith at all. And so we have different kind of idea concerning what faith is. But faith is not better than its object. Many of you today, you have your faith in the wrong place. Can you imagine you're supposed to head into to East Ham, but then again, you are driving to West Ham. It's because why? You are going to the wrong direction. Many of you today, your wrong path. You are trusting the false prophet. You are trusting the false God. Why not come today and give your heart to Jesus Christ? Trust the true God. Because if you put your faith in the wrong place, when you die, you cannot see God. That's what the Bible is saying here today. That whosoever believes in him is not condemned. But whosoever does not believe in Jesus Christ, that's him, you already condemned, even while you are living. So, the worst thing that can happen to a man, a woman also included, is to place your faith in the wrong place. It is a terrible thing to have your faith in the wrong place. So today, my dear friend, if you are heading to the wrong direction, you are the word of God speaking to you today. You see, because why? Positive thinking is not faith. Hoping for the best it's not faith. Giving it all is not faith. The Bible says, as it's written, the just shall live by what? By faith. So what is the object of faith? The object of faith is what? Is Almighty God. Listen to what the Bible says, Romans chapter 10, verse 11. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. This is the object of faith, the Almighty God. This is not mystical or magical. It is, it is about you believing. Faith is more better than this object. Faith is Jesus Christ. And if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have no faith at all. You can massage it. You can pretend it. But that's not faith. Amen? So faith is you trusting based on what Jesus Christ done at the cross of Calvary, my dear friend. You know what I like to say? You have faith that move mountains. No, my dear friend. You have no any faith that can move mountains. God move mountains. Amen. Jesus Christ is one moving the mountain. That's why the Bible says, in this context, Mark 11, verse 22. He said, Have faith in God. Just by saying, Have faith in God. Don't have faith in things. So your faith is not better than the object of the faith. A weak faith in the right object is even better than a misplaced faith in any object. A weak faith in God is better than a strong faith in anything else. Don't get the idea that a weak faith is bad. To compare, putting your faith in the wrong place. You see, what we can't hear is this, where you put your faith. You know about the man who bring the son, who the mom possess uh, to, the, to the disciple, they couldn't hear. Do you know why? Because they, 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 they didn't have the faith. But the man speak to Jesus Christ. I mean, you listen to this encounter. Because Jesus Christ said to the man, he said, if you believe, all things are possible with him that believe. Do you know what the man said to God? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. 
Have you ever been in that situation? I've been in that situation many times. I said to God, help my unbelief. Does it mean I was not believing? Of course, I was believing. You see, but there's a mountain that you come up to, and you see that you need God to come through you. Amen? Like I say, we say we have mountain. I afraid they move mountains. No. None of us have any faith that can move mountains. It's Jesus Christ that moves mountains. And just can move mountains based on you believing in Him. You see, the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. We are all to do what to look unto Jesus Christ. Why? He is the author and finisher of our faith. That is the object of your faith. Look unto Jesus Christ, not unto yourself. Amen. He is the author and finisher of our faith. It is our faith in Him. You see, when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ moved the mountains. It doesn't matter how weak your faith is. But put your faith in the right person. Don't put your faith in any false prophet. Don't put any faith in any man or woman. Put your faith on God. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible is saying here. I want you to understand this. Because many of you today, so I'm going to Manchester, you are heading to London. Because you are in the wrong path. You see, your faith is in the wrong place. That's why the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus Christ. Receiving means, don't, don't look away from him. Don't look on, onto something else. Only look unto Jesus Christ. Fix your eyes on him. All your circumstances, fix it, give it to him. Devil will try to deceive you. The devil is a liar. The devil will tell you not to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. Fix all your problems. Maybe you have bills, you can't pay. Maybe you have a sick person, you can't, you obviously can't look after. You have all these things going around you. But my dear friend, the Bible says, look unto Jesus Christ. Don't look unto any man or woman. Look unto Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your faith in him. Trust in him. He is the object of your faith. You must trust God. If your faith is weak, trust God. If you have 0, 0.1%, use that to trust God, my dear friend. It's better than you trusting yourself. Maybe your good intentions or your good will, my dear friend. Only Jesus Christ. You ought to do what to trust. You see? So, to that want you to understand. Don't get this idea that you can go it alone. Because the devil will deceive most of you. Sowing a, sowing a seed of that, try to trick you. To move you away from you trusting God. You can turn the table around, say to the devil, yes, my faith is weak, but my faith is in the hand of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because any weak faith in the hand of Jesus Christ, let me tell you today, God will use it. If you look into the Bible, you will see most people will have weak faith. Guess what? They still receive blessing from God. Amen? So put your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the author and finisher for our faith. Don't let them deceive you. Positive thinking is not faith. Your faith in Jesus Christ is your salvation. And now he is the object of your faith. Who is the object of your faith? God, Jesus Christ. Amen? What is your ambition in this life? Let me ask you. Your ambition in this life is to know God. You see, to know God is to trust God. To trust God is to obey God. Don't trust yourself. Amen? Trust Jesus Christ. Trust him. It's only who can lead to eternal life. Without him, you can never be saved, my dear friend. And that's the for this the Bible says, trust unto Jesus Christ, look unto him. He is the author and finisher for our faith. Don't look unto yourself. Because if you look unto yourself, you, you're going to be, you know, be disappointed and be discouraged. But fix your eyes on him, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he who believes in him shall never be put to shame. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ can never be discouraged, can never be disappointed, my dear friend. So, hope will get you through. And all you need is to do what? To learn him, to know him, to love him. Your ambition in this life ought to do what? To know him, to know more about him. To trust him. Because he, the one who can take it to eternal life. Without Jesus Christ, he can never see God. So, no faith, no grace. No faith, no hope. You see? Because our hope is in God. Who is the anchor of our life? Amen. The word of God ought to do what to be hoping on. This is this bring me to um, to the origin of faith. Put it in this way. Not only about the object of faith, but the origin of faith. The origin of faith is God in Himself. You must trust Him. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him, to please God. That's the reason why I'm telling you today. The origin of your faith is to do what? Is to trust Him. And to trust Him. You have to hear from him, isn't it? Because the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. Amen? So my dear friends, without you hearing, 
you cannot have faith. That's why God sent me here to preach to you today, my dear friend. So that you can have faith in God. Now listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what must we say? The Bible said the word is near you. How near is the word? In your heart and your mouth. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. So the object of faith is God, but you must know him. And the origin of faith is the word of God. So you must hear from him. And not only hear it from him, but you must learn to listen to him. Amen? If you want to have faith, you have to do what? Listen to him. You see, you cannot pray your way outside the will of God. You want your prayers to be answered? Pray with the will of God. Do you know what the will of God in your life today, my dear friend? The will of God is for you not to perish, but for you to be saved. God is not willing for anybody to perish, but every one of us to come to repentance. Hallelujah. So today, accept Jesus Christ today, that you may be saved. Receive him here today. You see, because faith is been given to you. You cannot crease your face, grind your teeth, thinking, I believe, I believe. No, 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 my dear friend. That's not faith. Faith must be given to you. That's why the read the Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. And that is the means. And all this thing comes from outside. You can never generate faith, my dear friend. All you can do today is to have natural faith. Natural faith is like you crossing the red light or crossing the road, hoping that the car will not hit you. That's natural faith. But I'm here to preach to you today about supernatural faith. And that natural faith is coming from the word of God. And he the word of God come inside your heart and open your heart and to transform you for you to believe. I like the way Peter put it in the first in second Peter chapter 1, verse 1. It talks about those women obtain faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and our Savior Jesus Christ. You see? And then Apostle Paul going to say this in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also do what to suffer for his sake. To believe in him being given to you. Nobody today can believe in God unless God enables him to believe. I repeat, you cannot believe in God unless God enables you to believe. It is only God who enables you to believe, my dear friend. And listen to me. The only way you can believe in God is to hear from God. And God will enable you to believe. And what the instrument God use? Word of God. That's what I'm telling you today. Only through the word of God, the Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ that you can believe. So my dear friends, unless God open your heart, open your ears for you to receive his word, you can never believe. You know, we like to say, name it and end it. That's what I used to say. Name it and claim it. That's so absurd, my dear friend. You cannot claim it unless God name it. And that's why the Bible says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. You see, the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 1, gives us a description about faith. He said, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, and the confidence of things not seen. So it is not hope may be, it is assurance of the word of God. That's what the Bible calls faith. The anchor of your soul. The bedrock of the faith is what? It is the word of God. So what I'm trying to say here is this. If there is no faith, there is no hope. If there is no faith, there is no grace. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So my dear friends, are you troubled today? Jesus Christ speaking to your heart in the book of Matthew 11 verse 28. This is the word that fell from the lips of Jesus Christ. He said, come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden. And I will do what? He will give you rest. Amen? So this also brings me now, because so far I have talked to you today about the object of faith, not only about the object of faith, also about what? The origin of faith. Not only about the origin of faith, now the objective of faith. So first of all, faith is not you trying to say, okay, I'm going to go and buy a house, I'm going to make money, and live a flashy life. That's not faith. Forget about that. That's not faith at all. The object of faith is what? Is the will of God to be done on the earth just as this is in the heaven. That's the object of faith. Objective of faith, my dear friend. Is you forsaking all your goals and to seek God's will should be your first priority. That's what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 31. It says, first see the kingdom of God and all his righteousness 
and then everything else will be added to you. So you should forsake your goals, forsake all your plans. Seek God, go seek His plan. Seek His plan. Your best priority in your life, your first priority is to do what? Is to see God wants to do in your life. Then Apostle Paul goes to say, There's no decision between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call on Him. Now, watch this. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That is the will of God in your life, that you may do or be saved. So finally, my dear friends, Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And how can we preach unless that be sent? As it is written, how beautiful is the feet of those who preach the good news. So today, my dear friend, my, my feet is so beautiful. I come here today to share with you the word of eternal life, the word of Jesus Christ, the better of life, that you ought to do what to eat so that you can have eternal life, the word of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot see God. You cannot go to heaven without Jesus Christ. Amen? So for you to have faith, you have to hear the word of God. And to hear the word of God, you have to believe. And if you believe, you have to receive it and stand on it. Apostle Paul even got to say, you have to suffer for it as well, my dear friend. So it, it is not a cakewalk. Amen? And then, as I said this, the gospel has been preached, the good news has been preached, but not all, also do will obey the gospel. For as I said, Lord, we shall believe for what you have been heard from us. Now watch this. So faith comes for hearing, and hearing through the word of God, the word of Jesus Christ. The man blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. The man blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.